this is the other side of, of the this problem is you know, when a man turns 30, you can't insult him on the way he looks. It's not cool because all you're thinking about is, oh, my God, I'm 30. I'm a, I'm a fat fuck and I'm old and my life has gone nowhere and I'm hideous. And then your friends are like, her, her, you're fat. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh, my God. But you know what actually is kind of funny? What What has allowed me to come to terms with my weight gain? The weight gain I'm is- rich. <laughs> well, there's that. Um, but actually, I bought a copy of The Sims 4, and I made myself in it, because you always do in The Sims. And I uh-huh. made myself fat, and I was like, you know what? That doesn't look so bad. Want to ring the bell? I'm taking it back. I'm taking them all back. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. I'm a lonely daddy. Rebel. I am the walrus. Hello everyone, welcome to John Hates Movies. This is the movie review podcast where my friends drag me away from karaokeing the greatest hits of Hollow Notes to instead watching movies. Uh, I like that one. This oh, week, sorry, yeah. You yeah, like, I that like that one? one? I like that yeah. one. To instead okay. watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop, stopping to dragging me. You know what? This We're going with this. We're doing it no, live. I like, I That's like right. One. We're doing I like it live. Whole, I like live. <laughs> okay. So uh, today on John Hates Movies, we have with us Eric Largent. Tally ho. We have Chris Arsenault. Call me by my street name. Loaded, Loaded baked, baked potato. potato. <laughs> <laughs> we have Colin McMillan. Greetings, mi amigos. And uh, last but not least for this week, we have Devin Betcher. Como están, bitches? <laughs> who's, who's Devin? <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Good question. I, I'm okay with this. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you haven't guessed it by now, the uh, movie in question is Desperado. But first... Hey everyone, if you've ever wanted John Hates Movies to review your movie choice, all you have to do to get in on the action is go to our Facebook page, John Hates Movies, post your movie review suggestion, as well as the member that you want to play this week's game for you. If that member is selected as the winner, we'll be watching your movie suggestion. Thanks a bunch, folks, and keep on listening to John Hates Movies. If I wanted to do that, I would follow John Hates Movies on Twitter or Facebook and uh, submit a uh, a movie to be reviewed, right? Absolutely. And yeah. then you go ahead and choose who it is that you want to play the game for you. Oh, hmm. yeah. Okay. Pick your pony. Exactly. So if, let's say, you wanted Colin oh. to uh, be the winner for you Bad this choice. time around, <laughs> you just go <laughs> ahead and write Colin in the comments and tell us what it is that you want uh, us to review. So if Colin happens to win that week, then we'll go ahead and look and see if he was chosen by our fan base. And if he was, then it'll be your movie that we're reviewing. Perfect. Although I think it should be noted that the first audience member to actually suggest a reviewing movie, we should just fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> first come, first serve. Fan. Exactly. I mean, one fan. Well, for, like, first one works. in. You know, and then he locks the door behind him. Ah, refreshing. Mmm, margarita. Margarita. <laughs> Piss warm chango. <laughs> Piss warm chango. Piss warm chango. That's my brand. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's start off here. The movie in question is Desperado. Uh, it's starring Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. I we love it. to do that. <laughs> uh, Salma Hayek. Huh. Uh, Joaquim de Almeida. And uh, its creator is Robert Rodriguez. Uh, the premise of the movie, well, actually, yeah, the premise of the movie is seeking revenge for the killing of his girlfriend. Minstrel El Mariachi goes and in search. And shooting of his hand. Yes. And uh, Minstrel El Mariachi goes in search of the seedy drug lord responsible, and a showdown ensues. Netflix gives this three and seven eighths of a star. It's actually missing just a tiny bit of the uh, wing, I guess is the best way to describe it. Okay. So, yeah. Who wants to go first this week? Can I start it off? Absolutely, Devin. Go All ahead. right. I want to start it off since I love this movie and I picked it. <laughs> All right. Good. Why, why did you pick this? Why did you want us to this see this? This is perfect because Dude, everything okay, he so says we can Okay, so I have seen Desperado in <laughs> well over a decade. Right. 
Um, I remember watching this when I was like pretty young, probably like 10, 12 years old. Wow. And just like, oh man, this movie's awesome. There's Where guns were and your parents? Rocket I know. launchers. There's and... a lot of violence in this movie. Like, Dude, I was and a lot some sex. Movies when I was a little kid. Like, like, like it was almost disturbing. <laughs> I never me had some like, uh, creative uh, sex. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, got to use those candles. Oh, I really enjoyed rewatching this movie for the first time in probably a decade. Probably Steve Buscemi's most likable part for me. He actually was like a good guy. He wasn't skeevy. He wasn't stupid, really. And he had some of the best lines. Like his whole like rendition of that bar scene in the beginning was awesome to me. That's probably you my mean favorite part. Where he tells a story like James. Yes, <laughs> where he tells a story like James. <laughs> like that whole interaction between him and Cheech in the beginning, like sets the entire mood for the movie for me. And I really thought it was awesome. It was like right on the point. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. That that that, mm-hmm. that whole scene is very good. Oh yeah. yeah, it was great setup to the whole to the movie. Like that in general really made it strange for me. For like, I was like, man, Steve Buscemi's actually freaking awesome in this movie. Like, yeah. he's a good actor. Well, he is a good actor, except he's. <sighs> But you know, there's a weird that thing role. that happens here in that Steve Buscemi is actually a very bad actor in this movie. I mean, his delivery is way off and uh, half of the time he's not really looking where it's supposed to. But at the same time, there's something about his performance in this that is just spot the fuck on. Yeah. It, you, you know, know why? Know? Because he's actually charming in this movie. Like, and he never gets to play that, but he's, yeah. you think he's, that's what he's actually yeah. the good guy in this. He's like, he's 100% of, like a yeah. stand up good guy in this. He's like, I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion that he's with the Steve more Buscemi, responsible half of the Antonio Banderas, <laughs> Steve Buscemi couple there. Right. Which only happens in this one movie. Um, but I have this sneaking suspicion. And he's killed for you. Watch, it. If you sat down and watched every Steve Buscemi movie in a row or every movie that he appears in, there's a point where his switch gets uh, his switch gets flipped, and he actually becomes a good actor because there are a lot of roles around this time that he's in that he's actually really not all that good. Hmm. Anyway. I, I would argue that he is both very likable and very good in The Big Lebowski. Yeah. Yes, definitely. He was really definitely. good, uh, not likable, but really good in Fargo. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. It's fucking mm-hmm. excellent. So is Fargo. that is that it? Is it Coen Brothers? Are they, are they yes. the ones that flipped the switch? Yeah, yeah uh, I think so. I think so. I think working with the Coen Brothers ma- uh, matured him a lot in his performances because like, I think it also just gave him a bigger range of things to do, other than like be the bug-eyed guy. Yeah. <laughs> he unfortunately kind of hurt himself there when he got involved with Adam Sandler, and then started <laughs> kind of like pigeonholed himself into that role. Yeah. Of being yeah. just the bug-eyed, stupid dude who's always being just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. From that, a lot of really good like action scenes. Antonio Banderas is awesome. Selma Hayek smoking hot. All we were, overall, just freaking awesome movie. What I was unhappy about is I didn't realize how weak the plot twist was at the end. And I had been talking to Chris <laughs> about this. Where they decide that the bad guy, El Bucho, is going to be Antonio Banderas' brother. It's and really he never bad. knew about it the entire time. And it's That's like weird. literally like... <laughs> So we're going to add this twist in here that could have been a big thing if you had added any foreshadowing to it. <laughs> yeah. but it's just like a one-sentence reveal, and it doesn't even affect the plot at all. Right. You know? <laughs> it's, it's really all. just completely un- unimportant. He's just like, I guess he's my brother. Hey. And he's like, <laughs> well, you're my brother, so I'm not going to just flat out kill you. I'm going to give you half a second and well, just right. kill Selma Hayek. It would have been be square again. What, what it is is instead of shooting him in the back, he yeah. goes to his compound and shoots him in the chest. It would have yeah. been like, – uh, all they would have needed to do, and they had room for this in a lot of the, the one-on-one scenes with Antonio Banderas and Salma Hayek, is for him to be like, you know, I always hated Ruff when I was young, me and my brother. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> any mention at all of, of anything any like that. Any mention of a brother. Uh, any mm-hmm. foreshadowing at all could have made that reveal work. Yeah. Like, but they didn't do anything. Nope. And, like, when he doesn't shoot El Bucho with Salma Hayek on the rooftop with his, like, sniper pistol, you're like, okay, why the fuck didn't he shoot this guy? And Salma Hayek's all pissed at him. And you're like, you had no, Which is funny I, you because had absolutely the whole no idea that it was the first brother. half of the movie. She's all defending him. So you can't kill him. He's good for the community. Right. And blah, and blah, blah. it comes blah. time to nut up and he's just like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. And she's all in his and face. She, it, it, it's funny because I immediately was like, oh, it's his brother. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, they must be hermanos. <laughs> that was the one thing that after rewatching it kind of got at me. See, other the, than that, like the one thing I thought during that scene, other than maybe it's his brother, is well, maybe El Marad, she just doesn't want to shoot the guy in the back yeah. to be the final his final move. If I had to say there was another slight shortcoming to this movie that I noticed was they put all this time and effort into talking up the two guys that help him out, <laughs> Chico and 
I don't remember the other one. Chico and the other like guy. Tampa or whatever. It, or... Tampa. Yeah. Chico and the man. Chico whatever. and the, the other guy the that two dies five minutes after he shows up. Exactly. They talk these guys up the whole movie. Steve Buscemi mentions his own. Like, you have this all this buildup for these guys coming to town just wrecking shit. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, they're awesome, but they're there for, like, three to five minutes. They don't say a single damn word, and they die. Right. And they die in stupid ways. Because he's like, <laughs> and he's like, like <laughs> no, I kind of call them. They will tear this town apart. And then yeah. he finally calls them, and they show up and get killed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I counted. Like I made, I made an effort to count the guy with the double machine gun uh, Suitcase. suitcases. <laughs> he doesn't kill anybody. <laughs> he misses everybody. He just like sprays cars and stuff. Yeah. He doesn't actually kill anybody with his ridiculous. He covers. So you're guns. saying that rocket <laughs> right. launcher guy was the far more effective? Oh, of by the two. far. <laughs> yeah, he killed two guys. Uh, the guy in the, the the guy in the car. And then himself. And then himself. <laughs> exactly. Right. He shot a rocket straight up and then came back. When, when that guy hit yeah, the that screen, was pretty bad. I thought for sure it was John Linguizamo, but it totally wasn't, and I was really no. disappointed. It would have been better if it was. That mm-hmm. would have up that movie by about 10% awesomeness. <laughs> oh, show. All right. I mean, those are my the big stickouts to me. But overall, I'm definitely giving this like a, a positive grade. It hit all the same awesomeness that I remembered it when I was a kid, and I could easily rewatch it. Like, I had no problem watching it again. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that. Uh, Eric, how you, how are you feeling? Yeah, you know, I, for me, I had seen this movie once before, um, you know, probably like ten years ago, and I was, uh, it, it didn't stick out to me as anything all that awesome, and then I, watching it again, it's once again just not all that awesome. Like, it's not bad enough to like just, like, it's not bad enough that I can that we can sit around and make fun of it at no end. And it's also right. not good enough to be like, wow, this was really great. So somebody I, – like I, I looked it up last night and before this, Antonio Banderas' like biggest movie was Interview with a Vampire. <laughs> right. Uh, so so – so Armand. <laughs> they, yeah. They, they came out uh, like a year apart. This uh, Interview with a Vampire came out a year before this. So what, and, was it not him and El Mariachi? No, no, it was a no, it's not. Desperado was like the high budget remake of El Mariachi. Oh, okay. This is the one that has real right. Hollywood it's, actors it's... in it, whereas the other one was like made on a seven thousand dollar budget by Robert Rodriguez and had like nobody. It's, it's, like, yeah, this no, is the Evil, Evil Dead, Dead Two yep. of the revenge flick. Yeah. Exactly. He like was like, well, now that I've got a million dollar budget, I can actually cast like good people. Right. So in that in that year between uh, you know when Antonio Banderas became a name movie star and this movie. He didn't take any classes on how to handle guns during gunplay. Oh my god! Because he had the limpest <laughs> wrist, and he was just flapping the guns around. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I did yeah. notice that his gunfighting scenes were like terrible. Like he just that. flapped guns around. He's, he's like, shaking he was, uh, bullets out of them. The shaking bullets, yeah. yes, where he like literally like is shaking the guns. Well, forward, if, like, yeah, if he soda. if he like whips the gun for or forward, it makes the bullets go faster. Yeah, yeah. I actually loved that. I like, hated to me, it. That it's was so, a selling point. No, because it's just so like. Uh, this I, made me laugh. His whole yeah, his whole it, action was was clumsy though. That was the whole thing that I got is that he was like this clumsy badass. He was like the uh, Professor Clouseau of of action movies. I noticed that because he's like flopping around like a fish through yeah. most of those yeah. action he's, yeah. sequences. Fifty percent of the movie, he's got his ass kicked. He's like always getting shot and bleeding. He's like always at like yeah, half he's power. not so much a badass as much as he's just. Persistent. Yeah, he, he endures. He has a lot of weapons, and also the bad guys really suck. Yeah, True. there's a lot of stormtrooper in here. Oh Absolutely. yes, Storm, stormtrooper. Absolutely, stormtrooping intensifies. <laughs> Another thing that that Rodriguez was obviously doing in this movie was trying to trying to poke fun at traditional uh, like action movie tropes. They just weren't delivered well. Like the the bar, uh, the bar that uh, Cheech is uh, the bar is at. Yeah, I can't remember what the name of it was. Like the Stingray or something. Sure. There's a sign out front that says uh, "Members and non-members only." And it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, that that that's cute. Um, and then like there's the uh, the scene where the, where the uh, the henchman is chasing. El Mariachi down the sidewalk and walks like, I, walks behind him for a good minute before, he tries to <laughs> before line up even a shot like on him. yeah trying to line up a shot like that. 
I, uh, you know, I don't know. Actually, it's kind of starting to sound like you didn't like this movie, Eric. I didn't like this movie. Yeah. <gasps> what? No. This, is, this is like, this is a rarity for John Hates oh, Movies. Go uh, ahead movie and uh, I didn't elaborate. Like. The sex scene was awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it was this, okay, Antonio Banderas yeah, and Selma it. Hayek may be two of the most attractive people that have ever lived <laughs> on Earth. <laughs> Genuinely. And Two individuals who seem to have just continued to be more attractive with age. Yeah. Right. They, they both look great still. But this is the aw- most awkward, worst done. Like, all of a sudden, you're upside down kissing his chest. Like, and everything. It's almost, like, it's, it's almost as if Robert Rodriguez had never been with a woman. <laughs> like, these, like these, are two, these are two people that are incredibly attractive and you, they found a way to make me feel awkward while watching a sex scene with them in it. Like it was yeah, bad. There was a like, couple was a of positions really in there scene. where it's like, how does the point of penetration even work at that point? <laughs> right, like, right. You know, it's like he's going for the armpit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, it's like, what part and then of him is she kissing me right now? This is and then followed up with an even weirder move. <laughs> yeah, well, at least she wasn't crying Mexico, like the I mean, uh, they waitress got all sorts of technology <laughs> convoy. Down there. Well, no, okay, but but like, and and Rodriguez's obvious move, like he wanted that to, 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 he wanted everybody to think that that's such like a passionate, crazy, you know, ball and sex scene because he followed it up with, you know, the chick just grinding on uh, Bucho and right. him just smoking the cigar and blowing it into her mouth, like, you know, having that juxtaposition where you know. Mariachi and Selma Hayek are doing it right, and Bucho's just an animal or yeah, whatever. Right. You know? <laughs> like it was just. Uh, Me- it, meanwhile, what a dick! <laughs> yeah, I really did like Bucho as an enemy, though. Like he had some really good lines. Yeah, I uh, liked that. No, no, he was he was the most cookie cutter bad guy of yeah. all time. He was, but that was what I liked about him. Like uh. you, ex- you got exactly what you expected. Like when he has all of his guys like, lined up, and he's like, "I don't know which one of you get." Which one of you guys is a bad guy? I don't know. I've never seen you before. Just shoots one of his dudes in the if, chest. And he's like, was, I am starting to not guy. recognize any of you. If that was De Niro or Pacino, that scene would have, A, won an Oscar. B, yeah. Yeah. been ten minutes longer. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I, do, I, I will admit was, the best Bucho scene, without a doubt, is when he's yelling at everyone, what? The phone number for his <laughs> limousine. Is. That's, that's what is the bad. phone number? For what is bad. the phone number for my phone? Fucking what is car. my phone number? <laughs> but, but I, I thought Bucho was hilarious. Like, and I thought that I that was too. all deliberate. I thought, I thought it was supposed to be like that. You know. See, yeah, I, I saw that stuff. Like, um, well, like here's where... the thing: he was so serious the whole time. You know, for it to be funny, I, don't know, I I honestly didn't really like his character at all. Yeah, see, for me, all the humor fell flat because it's such, like, it, and another thing that I actually didn't like is this, this is a hyper-violent movie that they actually had to tone down the violence to get it into theaters. I Like, I was actually a little That's bit crazy. surprised that how day violent. Standards, that would hey, be a thing. I was actually, like, really surprised at how violent this movie was. And I, and, like, when there is... Like, little bits of levity in between. It just doesn't... And, like, they're not delivered very well. It just seemed weird. It was... Yeah, uh, it was weird to me. But, yeah, that's... Those those are my takes for now. I... I yeah, I... I didn't really care about it when I saw it the first time, and I don't care about it now. What about you, Chris? Where are you falling on this? Uh, here's the thing. I actually like the movie, but yeah. here's here's my here's the thing on that. Um, I don't think it's a great film. You know, I don't want to suck its stick like Devin does. I'm not saying it's a great film. I <laughs> like I'm pretty it, sure you but... said it was great. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's my point, and this is outside of the uh, the. It's so good because I like it. Kind of the, whatever. The, the, sorry, we had a huge <laughs> debate uh, the other night about uh, whether or not a film is good or bad. Also dependent on being whether you like it or not, and whether you can admit a bad film is bad even though you love it. <laughs> this is one of those movies that I acknowledge. You know, what movie were we talking about, Chris? Or Shut up. Or acknowledging a good movie is good even though you hate it. Right. Yeah. Like there, there are plenty of movies like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Shawshank yeah. Redemption or something. I don't right, particularly uh, go out of my way dreams. to. Yeah, I don't go out of my way to watch it. I've seen it once. 
Is it a good right. movie? Yeah, I could definitely I will say it's a never good movie, rewatch but... Requiem for a Dream just same, the, uh, the stuff same ending. Here. Oh. Yeah. Like I, I that's an excellent movie, but uh, once is enough. Thanks. Right. Yep. <laughs> that was a uh, kind of uh, a background because, like I said, I don't hate the movie. I enjoy the movie. It held up as well as I thought it would, honestly. But I didn't really have a high regard for the movie bef- the, from the last time I saw it, like a decade ago. I, I hope somebody has something interesting to say about uh, about um, Machete. Because, I don't know, he was just in this movie. He was kind of cool, but then he died. Yeah, yep. short-lived. <laughs> and once again... <laughs> is that his character actually was pretty much machete in this yeah. movie. Once again, Robert Rodriguez introduces all these characters. Oh, here's a badass. Let's kill him. Oh, here's a badass. Let's kill him. Meanwhile, all the retarded, retarded, retarded Stormtrooper motherfuckers in this movie keep flooding out of nowhere. It's like he had an... He's like the Mexican Georgia R. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, it's, it's George uh, R. Martin. <laughs> Mar- Martinez. All right, so let me get back to this. I'm with Eric. Antonio Banderas and Selma Hayek. I like them. And they are two very, very attractive people. Absolutely. In this movie, though, and I brought this up before with... Devin, I fucking hate Quentin Tarantino in this film. <laughs> well, I right. hate him in all his, when he's in any of his films, but more the point, I hate Quentin Tarantino specifically because he ruins my favorite joke. That <laughs> stupid joke he tells in the bar because he has oh. no he has no fucking comedic timing and when he, he's done telling that joke, you want to piss on him. <laughs> I know. It's, and, and it's, and I've heard that joke before. It's a good joke. It's a and, great and joke. It, it's a good joke and, you, and it eats up a fairly significant portion of this scene right. with him ham-handedly telling it. Yes. Uh, it was just awful. That's all I ever really remember about Desperado, quite honestly. <laughs> That's all I think I need to my hatred for Tarantino and tell, ruining my favorite joke. But because we've gone as far as ripping apart small stupid things in the film already, I'm going to continue this with, uh, quite honestly, this is the worst fucking drug cartel ever. <laughs> uh, the scene when they're when when him and uh some hayek wake up and he sees the uh dude and she's playing guitar and he sees the dudes walking on the uh you know balcony and whatnot and he just starts lighting into him this is one of those moments where it does go into one of those action movie tropes of unlimited ammo but it bothers me so much and... because he shoots like nine Nine shells out of a double barrel shotgun, and at least three times in this scene, you see the slide on that pistol lock back because it's out of bullets. Which is so funny because early on in the movie, he spends like half of a gunfight or more reloading, reloading in right. an earlier scene, it's like and then he just never has all, to reload again. He, yeah, he, he exactly he got he all his reload, reloaded so often in the early part of the movie that he never had to again. Right, <laughs> <laughs> preemptive reloading. <laughs> <laughs> Though I did love that fight scene with the guy where he kept getting, grabbing guns that were yes, out of ammo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was that nice. is, uh, out of ammo again. That is again. a super Fuck. classic scene. That is that a great was, scene. That was some very good comedy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I really enjoy Steve Buscemi in this movie. Like I said, he was a very likable character. But once again, the two guys he calls in that, like we said, supposed to destroy this town. That was the fear. Fucking worthless. Dude, dick. Uh, and, I mean... Operation Meat Shield. Quite, yeah, exactly. Quite honestly, for. they were very show and no go, but it did... It, it, it just blows my mind, because when you look at it, between those two and Antonio Banderas as, like, these mariachi gunfighter things, <laughs> their guitars were way cooler. <laughs> the only thing I do really appreciate about, you know, the whole... That whole trope, the the hiding a gun and or hiding weapons in a uh, guitar case, yeah. Back to uh, the spaghetti western, the original Django. Django, yeah. That is the best reveal ever, without I a doubt. I haven't seen Django, but I know, I know what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows what he's referring to. That's like one of the classic, like. Something is what it isn't. Right. Situations. Well, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the main character is carrying around a coffin through the movie, and then he's confronted with like a wall of uh, men on horseback looking to kill him. So he leaps over the coffin and pulls out a fucking Gatling gun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and mows him down. Excellent. It's fucking brilliant. 
Okay, so Colin, uh, what do you got for us here? Colin, it sounds like you like this movie a lot, actually. Well, uh, yeah, I wrote a couple of, uh, I wrote a review here. A couple here. of pages? Actually, I did. I, I, did. <laughs> I don't have pages of notes, I have He's pages of He's actually submitting it as Lay his it on me. <clears throat> Desperado. I think I could watch Antonio Banderas and Salma Hayek for an indefinite amount of time. <laughs> it's no secret that I think Hayek is, as Bostonians might say, wicked hot. But watching Desperado reinforced that notion in my head about 20 times. For those listening at home, I want to mention that in my fervor of scribbling my love for Salma Hayek, I wrote the word watching as two words hyphenated. This is why I should consider writing reviews in pencil. Unfortunately, I suffer from a condition known to professionals as favorite pen syndrome. Where was I? Oh, yes, Desperado. <laughs> I didn't get that. I don't either, but it's still funny. Desperado. <laughs> and it's attractive cast. Banderas and Hayek are so outlandishly good-looking, they manage to raise the attractiveness of the entire movie by about two points. Yep. E- even Steve Buscemi looks good in this movie. <laughs> and that's saying something. Yeah, that is saying something. If this movie were a human being, Banderas would be the face. Buscemi is the voice. Cheech Marin is the wagging eyebrows. Danny Trejo is the arms. Salma Hayek is the b- br- <laughs> brain. See what I did there? That guy who plays Bucho is the tailor, and good old Quentin Tarantino is the stinky, smelly butthole. Least favorite part. But even the beautiful can have dirty butts and still be hot. Desperado is a hot blonde in a fast car. Don't think about it too much. Just enjoy the ride. Maybe there's not much beneath the surface, but who cares? It looks good, and you feel great while it lasts. It's not going to change your life or open your mind. That's not what it's for. It's a summer fling, a camp romance, or a quick sweaty rebound to get you over the last shit-ass movie you watched. (laughs) Enjoy. And <laughs> Yay! I'm so glad they didn't use the dick gun. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Yes. Apparently, it was part of a. Yeah, uh, I've got. I've got some to... uh, some talk. Well, well it was yeah, an homage to Dustin, du- but it was uh, apparently it was um in a cut. It was in a couple of cut. deleted scenes. Yeah, deleted scene. So from, man, that would have made my life a lot happier. From I, I could... on came before this. Yes. Yeah, it was. I think directly before this. Yeah, I, I think could read. All he had done was El Mariachi, which was like his like breakout thing that he made on like no money then he had his first big budget movie was dust till dawn then this from dust till dawn would have been way cooler if it had el mariachi in it as one of the patrons of the bar that would have been awesome come on so that I, would have I been can, sweet i can read you some wikipedia stuff on this uh is that regarding notch. the dick gun uh <laughs> all right uh, wiener back story of yes <laughs> wiener witzer i like that <laughs> all right so here we go after it was submitted to the MPAA, the movie was rated NC-17 due to graphic violence and it had to be severely cut for an R rating. Amongst the scenes that were trimmed are the deaths of Quentin Tarantino's character oh, and, come on. Know, we- and his friend at the bar, as well as Danny Trejo's character. By far the most major excision from, came from the end of the film, which originally contained a large-scale shootout between El Mariachi, Carolina, Bucho, and his thugs at Bucho's mansion. However, owing to the amount of footage that the MPAA demanded to be removed from the scene, Rodriguez elected to remove the sequence in its entirety, giving the film its current fade-out ending. Two additional scenes were also deleted, featuring the crotch gun, seen in the guitar case. Originally, the gun was used by El Mariachi during the second bar shootout when he uses it to shoot the first thug before whipping out his pistols from his sleeves and finishing him (laughs) off. In a second deleted scene, the crotch gun was to go off accidentally while Banderas was in bed with Hayek, blowing a hole through the guitar while they were playing it. That would have made the movie way worse. Dude. Yes! That would have been bad. I would have liked to see it. So, (laughs) I'm actually surprised they didn't do the Bucho shootout scene. It was... It was crazy violent, just like the rest of the movie. But you say this movie's crazy violent. It, it is. may have been crazy violent for its time, but when you think about modern day like movies, there's way worse violence. I mean, uh, Antonio three, Banderas had brains in his hair. Three hundred on the street literally hacks people apart. I've I seen underst- people's legs get like cut off. That's by that movie's cartoonish. What about this Rambo? Movie isn't. The newest Rambo, where he's got the gun and he's just like mowing people down, and you're yeah, that's pretty. You're seeing bullets like 50 cals fly through people. Yeah. That was cool. 
those movies are crazy violent too. I mean, what? Like, are you arguing that this movie isn't crazy violent I'm by saying, comparing it to other crazy violent I'm movies? I'm saying in comparison to modern crazy violent, it's nowhere near as violent. I'm actually really surprised that this came after From Dust Till Dawn. It seems to me that if Rodriguez had just directed George Clooney like he directed Antonio Banderas, we would have had a much better movie. I agree. Maybe Banderas is a much better actor than George Clooney. I would say he is. No. He's not? I'd say they cut from the same cloth. I think so. Okay. Because they both have that sense of whimsy. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing about this movie, too, is that, you know, Eric, one of the things that just really drove you nuts is that it was just like kind of a pretty, if I'm understanding you correctly, kind of a pretty bad setup yeah. of uh, 80s yes. action flicks. I thought it was kind of an 80s action flick filmed in the 90s. I don't think it was an intentional send up. I think it was more or less an okay. homage. See, because I was know, seeing it like parody, like you know. Yeah, I don't think it was a parody. I think it was like genuinely Robert Rodriguez trying to do what people, you know, did in Die Hard. You know, you know, when it got to the what when, when it got to the walking away from this explosion in slow motion scene, I right. that was fucking I ridiculous. I did have a moment. That was a good where I was scene. Like, Wait, are they really doing this, or are they ironically doing this? I are I they funny? Can't tell, yeah. Are, are they are they for real? Like, what? I couldn't tell. Yeah. This is a real walk away from explosion. I think I think it was. I think everything in here was, with the exception of the sex scene, <laughs> was as real <laughs> as uh, Rodriguez was able to make it. But I mean, I I think that in this in this particular case, this movie was uh, genuinely trying to be something real here. I think. Uh, I mean. <sighs> Yeah, there's definitely some parts in here that I'm... It's weird on some of the things that we agree on and some of the things that we don't agree on. Like, you know, I agree that this movie was actually fun. I agree. I think that this movie has a, a genuine sense of whimsy. But I don't think Steve Buscemi is doing a very good job in this. Um, just the way... Seeing him in Boardwalk Empire and seeing him in, like, fucking The Big Lebowski and then watching him deliver... <laughs> dialogue in this movie it's like it's almost night and day well you're well at least from boardwalk empire in this you are talking 20 years well yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. Years. i wasn't really paying attention so much to the way he was delivering the dialogue i think it was more just the way that he was characterized which yeah. is a steve buscemi that i've never seen oh absolutely it's like that i agree the responsible with. older brother who's like yeah. respected and actually kind of cool yeah and like got his shit together you're like man this is like a weird steve buscemi i don't know what this steve buscemi is i got a question about steve buscemi because it's been mentioned a couple times uh, during this podcast people are saying that he's good in the big lebowski but why like he doesn't that's not a particularly donnie's not a particularly challenging role it it's a lot of very short lines that are out of context i disagree yeah playing the straight man is challenging and i think the straight man donnie is donnie is very challenging because he doesn't have any any lines that fit in context. No, he has. He has Yet you get a sense of heart from that character that you don't get. Are from you Walter sure? I'm almost. 100%. I feel like and we maybe, should watch that. Maybe one. because he died. And like, I mean, you know, I love that. Maybe movie. because I, I love, love him in it. But I'm just saying, like, citing that as one of Steve Buscemi's finest performances is, is, I think it's a little. That's going a little far. I think you're going a little far. I, you are. You are. All right. <laughs> you? No, you. I like it. No, you. You're a towel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, or, you know, maybe not, maybe not Big Lebowski if you're Colin. Uh, though the rest of the world agrees that that's a brilliant performance worthy of an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but certainly in Boardwalk Empire, he shows his chops. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, I will agree with that. You know, in, in Fargo, he shows his chops. Oh, yes. In this movie, and I guess that's the thing, is that for me, if a person doesn't sound natural, if they sound like they're an alien robot from outer space or, you know, from Bucker Bonsai or something, then that's when I have a problem. I don't care if their character's lovable. I don't care if their character's fuzzy. I don't care if their character's like a murderous son of a bitch. If they can't talk right, if they don't talk like a normal human being delivers actual words and sentences, I can't get behind it. I was, and that's, I was sad. Smacks a bad actor. Sad that he died and that he didn't do anything. Yes. There's another thing about this movie that even though it's fun, and I, I guess I do have to kind of make reference to, I know that this is supposed to be a reimagining of the original movie. but it seems Which I've like, also never seen. Right, yeah. But it seems like they make a lot of throwbacks to the, the original movie, as in, like, 
references to dialogue. Like, I mean, you guys do realize that the first movie is, is, it, it is El Mariachi basically up until the point to where he gets his hand shot. Oh, okay. So it is a reimagining and a remake because the plot is exactly the same, but the characters are different. Hmm. So, like, the guy who shoots his hand and then he kills everybody in the first movie works for Bucho. And then so basically yeah. they just kind of redo the movie again. And so they make like these references to this movie that nobody's ever seen. Kind of oh, I've, I've seen it. No, it's just been... Fever yes, Dream. Yes, Fever I... Dream. Oh, those are the worst. <laughs> and, and also, people going to see Desperado had not seen it. Oh, right? yeah. Right. Sure. And that's the thing is I've really enjoyed... Like I said, uh, I, I know, really yeah, enjoyed Desperado. Yeah, I saw El Mariachi, El Mariachi probably a year or two after I saw Desperado. Yeah, I've still never seen El Mariachi. It's fucking on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> I probably will just never. Well, I, yeah, I, not, think, I think we we're do done. Yeah, yeah, I think we're not. done huh? with Rodriguez. No, 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 no. That's that's not See, what like, I was no. suggesting. That's... I was accusing him of being. So when I was, I I also might be a victim of a little bit of Rodriguez fatigue right. because like from Dust Till Dawn yeah. and Desperado. Are ne- neither of them are movies that I would seek out on my own. Right. And now I just had to watch two of them in a row. <laughs> and I don't like it. Rob, Rob at all. Rob so now Eric has a clear Yep, he has yeah. a clear line of how much Rodriguez yeah. he should take it. I'm gonna tell you fatigue. I'm gonna tell you, like uh I'm with Eric on that one, even though I actually enjoyed Desperado, like I I'll be good for watching Robert Rodriguez for a while. Like I, I had always kinda wanted to watch Death Proof and Planet Terror, but now I'm like, no, nah, I don't need to. <laughs> Just watch Death Proof. Yeah, Death Proof is the good side of that. uh, Even still, though, I mean, like, after seeing what... Go watch Sin City. Well, after seeing what Tarantino does to Rodriguez, like, I I don't know if I want to support that. I don't want to support that friendship financially. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Or or with time. (laughs) Because... Well, the, the car chase scenes in Death Proof are some of the best I've ever seen. Ever, ever, ever. They're good. They're great. I, I just filmed like at like seventy miles an hour. Yeah, I really like Death Proof, but that's, yeah, they're, they're they always really end up good. with like actors I just really like. It's the I'll the entire... stick with Convoy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> them some chase good chase scenes. Scene. That's yeah. just one gigantic chase scene. I liked it, but it, it's not good enough that I was I would be like, oh my god, you gotta watch. See? You know, no, I, right. I said that Eric, too. Eric yeah. nailed it in the beginning. Yeah, you know, it's it's like there's just not enough to say about it. It's like, yeah, it was there's fun. Some good, but you're not. It's there's some. Yeah, it's fun. It's whimsical. It's but it's not. It it's whimsical without the heart. So you get the whimsy, <laughs> but you don't get the like. Like Die Hard has heart. Like, so so you you yeah. you have the whimsy, but none of the fucks given. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, like I care about John McClane. I want to know right. that he's okay. In the end. Right. You should write him a letter. <laughs> you know? And, and the only reason like... you want El Mariachi to live is because he's played by Antonio Banderas. I know. Banderas. Exactly. <laughs> you just got only. residual Antonio Banderas love. Well, I just I just don't – I don't want to see Selma Hayek end up with some other scumbag. So. Right. <laughs> right. That's the only reason I'm rooting for Banderas. Exactly. No one else can touch her. Only I Alec mean... Baldwin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This was uh, definitely like was that a thirty a easy reference? to watch movie nice. like, and that's what I'm going to say is I can rewatch this movie without having oh. any problem with. Like for me, this can be in the background. I don't really have to pay attention to it. I'll still enjoy it. <laughs> it can just be like you know, Devin. I'm really movies. glad. Movies. You know, <laughs> I, I know it's great because you, you did, gotta watch and it. you don't. Yeah, you may not remember, but you did describe this movie as great. <laughs> I do. I really like this movie. That's I'm like, actually really glad that we. Uh, we added you to the cast, Evan, because we needed somebody who really enjoys shitty things. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got Chris for that. You know, I'm actually beginning to think Chris has a layer of taste <laughs> that isn't really present. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, right, because I, I distinguish I like this movie, but it's bad. Oh, yeah. You know. Like, I, <laughs> I put this in the same genre as... Oh, hold on, Chris. Don't beat me for it. Starship Troopers. I already told you I'd punch you in the face <laughs> if you brought it up again. Because, I mean, it's not a great movie. Like, it's never going to win an award or an but Oscar I love or any it. Emmys or anything like that. Like, no one's ever going to be like, this is a huge piece of art. I am so happy this was invented. But I can watch it any time and be happy about it. Starship I Troopers, like, hey, good movie. Street I Fighter. Oh, man. A couple movies oh, that are geez. not. They See, are not good John movies Cross at all. But I love them. And Robot Jocks. For my... L- and robot jocks, and I, I, I know they're not good movies, but I will defend them to my death, sir. Exactly. <laughs> they're definitely not, not. Not whether they're good or not, 
but how much I love them. You, you will defend <laughs> their you right to exist. Turn them on. Exactly. There you go. On. Their, their right to this. exist, not their right to be called a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Though I, I honestly don't think Starship Troopers is nearly as bad as people. Make I it watched out to it uh, a couple of years ago, and I, I I'm kind of with you on that. Like it, it's it's uh, it's dated. Yes, it's dated. Um, yes, and they're you know it's not like going to go down as one of the greats, but people give it a little too short a shrift. It's really not that bad a movie. Yeah. Um, and a lot of what they're doing there is is totally supposed to be like referential to the propaganda of the world war two era. And yeah, and, and I right. love so, the propaganda. So there is a point in the movie and that's a big part of it. And I think that they really hit that nail on the head. When Colin was talking positive things about starship troopers, I was unwilling to interrupt him for, for fear that he might start to correct himself. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I, 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 I appreciate that someone eloquently as Colin Said positive things about Starship Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of action movies like Desperado, I put them in like the same boat as things like The Expendables. Is anyone going to give The Expendables awards for being a great movie? Fuck no. They're but, barely oh, good okay, movies, wait a minute. But they are incredibly the, this, enjoyable. The I Expendables really, I, 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 was a the shitty Expendables. movie, though. That was a really but shitty they, movie. They were really shitty, but was I it fun to watch? I think any one of them were a lot no, better and more enjoyable. It wasn't fun to watch. Then nah, they were fun that's well, the thing is, you're talking about a genre that that genre is. It's not just an action movie; it's the gun movie. Like th- right. this is a subgenre of action. It's the gun movie where you have like a really loose a, a loose idea of a plot line. You know, they killed my girlfriend, or like they stole yeah. my money, or I am, or oh, I'm Jason Statham, and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 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 commando. You took something from me. I'm getting it back. Boom. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. Here's here's with the, yes. Boom. I'm Arnold. Commando. <laughs> commando. Die Hard. Uh, I come in peace. Um, they live. Uh, oh God! Yeah, you, a, they live is not a gun. See, movie. I don't think Die Hard if, if it was a gun, a gun movie, movie, that that fight scene would have happened a lot Die, faster. No, I'm saying yeah. it, Die Hard yeah, is a Christmas it's movie. A holiday movie. Yeah, and Die Hard <laughs> is a Christmas. Okay, what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going. I'm going back up. I'm going back up to action. But what I'm what I'm all trying right. to get at here is that you you can't just paint it all with the same brush. There's there's good action, and then there's yeah, no shitty doubt. action. And gu- and it has nothing to do with the and choreography or the actual action. Gun movies stuff. are usually but I mean, that's the basis of what I'm trying to say is that there's movies right. Movies I'm just saying the opposite thing of what you're movies. saying. Gun but, movies, <laughs> and I'm saying that what you're saying is wrong. That you can enjoy movies. Even <laughs> gun movies uh, are, I mean, like they're really usually the the ass end of the action movies. Like it's just it's just explosions, and that's it. Like you know, a l- bad action movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Terrible action. Yes, movie. I agree. Uh, you know what? I actually thought about Mr. and Mrs. Smith when I watched this. Like, ha- like has is Mr. and Mrs. Smith like the next time after this movie that two super attractive people have been in such a shitty movie? You know, that's the only. Boom. I I, I, I uh, <laughs> I'm really not attracted to Angelina Jolie really at all. Except Either. I don't think she's hot even a little for bit. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's the only movie I ever watched where I thought she was super hot. Um, I don't. I really like Brad Pitt, but I I don't really remember much else about that movie other than that. I fell asleep during the climax. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I literally, I literally I fell asleep. Right fell asleep. <laughs> I mean, I literally <laughs> fell asleep during the end shootout. I have no idea how that went. <laughs> you're not helping That's, yourself, you, man. That doesn't clear it up, Johnny. That doesn't clear it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I get it. Oh, you the, are you saying the big payload put you to sleep? Is that what, is that what you're saying? Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. Uh, so I think we've I think we've established <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> shitty action movies. It's almost like they happen every year. Uh-huh. Yeah, they do. They, shitty action movies are so like they're everywhere. You just have to have a general tolerance. Well, how can there have shitty. been six Fast and the Furious movies? How can that? How can that be? How can she? How can she slap? <laughs> Colin, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on a slap? secret. Tokyo Drift. There are a lot of really See, dumb people exactly in this world. That's exactly where I'm going. You know. Nope. 
Tokyo Drift is awesome. In effect, Tokyo uh, Drift. John, yeah. John, you're, I love Tokyo. Hold Drift. on, your guys' you argument serious? that <laughs> things that are populist are good apply would apply ah, to the Fast and the Furious movies. Mm. Yes, ah. I am bringing it back because those Tokyo are, Drift. It's like it's like you play. <laughs> no, I, I, I have to get a straight. I have to get a straight answer from John. Are you yeah. serious about Tokyo Drift? I am serious about Tokyo Drift. <laughs> Excellent. <everyone's> you don't. <laughs> How can you not you be serious like, about Tokyo Drift? You don't sound like you have a serious face on. You sound like you have your your margarita face on. My <laughs> margarita. <laughs> you know, I didn't fall asleep during that class. Wow. <laughs> Tokyo Drift. Oh wow. man. Because they yeah. drift. <laughs> <laughs> this is the podcast where my friends drag the me away from Margaritaville. So is it is it time for the game? I think yeah, it feels game like it's time. game time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Devin, what do you got for us? Mm, we're not doing the uh review thingy. I thought that was the game this week. No, oh, you come up with a game. I get to yeah. come up with a game. I thought you guys had ousted my game with uh the review thingy. What review? No. All right, no, I still get a thing. game. No, so he's talking, talking about, about the poll. Ah, no, that poll hasn't gone up yet. Like oh. people haven't. This is not live right now. Wait, you're gonna push this? This is uh, just instant. No, 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 no. And even Everything then, I say goes to Rick. Just, Rick. just so we can clarify that the the, the whole poll thing or whatever. If, if you're listening at home, all you have to do is just, you know, post a comment on the Facebook page. And then you choose the person that you want to play the game for you. Pick pick Eric because he's already won the game twice and he's obviously the best. Yeah, pick, <laughs> pick Eric because and don't ever pick John <laughs> because John never wins. Pick Colin because Colin is cool and friendly. Wait, that, <laughs> if it, wait, don't pick Eric because if you pick me, then I don't get to pick my own movie for everyone to watch. <laughs> That's true too. All right, pick, I was I was personally going to tell people not to pick. Oh me no, because pick, they won't. Pick James because we don't want to watch any more of James's movies. I agree. <laughs> I think that's a pretty solid choice. James is go. ridiculous enough to be good at the games, and he is terrible at terrible games. movie taste. So pick, pick James. James. <laughs> pick James, everybody. Gotcha. Hashtag right. got it. Hashtag pick James. All right, there we go. All right, I got our game. Okay. Our game for this week is come up with a fictional Antonio Banderas movie. And I will judge on which one of these is the best one that I would like to see the most being made. Oh, no. So we have to come up with the best movie to put Antonio Banderas yes, in. the best possible movie for Antonio Banderas, who has not been I got much it. outside of Expendables. <sighs> the story lately. of Devin starring <laughs> Antonio Banderas. <laughs> oh, come on. Hey, if you're going to go, you go for the gold. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> what happens in the story of Devin Chris, with Antonio Chris, Banderas? Chris, stop undoing Devin's belt. <laughs> What's going on over there? Antonio Banderas going to undo my belt. Strangely, his uh, he he meets the the love of his life, Maggie, played by Selma Hayek. <laughs> this is this is gold. I'm telling you. Uh, and they play magic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> I'm uh... too real, too real. Um, uh... <laughs> dial it back, dial it back. <laughs> pull up, pull up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's actually a line from the movie, except with the better sex scene. <laughs> oh my god. I got I'm mine. Such a glare from Devin. I love it. I don't <laughs> even care if I, I don't even know what to do with this. I don't even care if I lost now. All right. Okay. I got mine. I got mine. I want to go. I want to go. go. Do it. Okay. Uh, a reboot. Antonio Banderas style. A reboot of Top Gun. Where Antonio Banderas plays Goose. And uh, um, I can't remember. Who's well, Maverick? Maverick. Maverick. Antonio Banderas is also Maverick, and he's also Iceman. <laughs> oh no, okay. Goose! You are gone. Oh, it's okay. You so much. Right you were like a brother to me. <laughs> Johnny, you sound so wrecked. I'm not wrecked. This is an it's awesome really movie. Nice. So all you really wanted... The need for speed. I want you to know that really all he really wanted to set up with this movie is a all Antonio Banderas homoerotic volleyball scene. Oh my god, how is that not awesome? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, just imagine filming that. <laughs> like six Antonio Banderas all shirtless playing... <laughs> it, was, it was either going to be that or Spy Kids 10. Oh shit. You mean I he hasn't we made that one Robert yet? Rodriguez. All right, so so my movie 
is a buddy cop comedy with Antonio Banderas and Cheech Marin, oh, where where they they are police officers in uh, Texas. In Me- are they Texas Rangers? <laughs> well, the, yeah, they're like they're like sub level Texas Rangers. <laughs> they're Texas Rangers. They have then to... one night they become Texas Strangers. Well, see the Texas <laughs> the Texas Rangers don't like Cheech and Antonio very much. <laughs> So they give him a, uh, a Volkswagen. Because they're on the wrong side of the border? They give him a bol- – yeah, they give him a Volkswagen bug to ride around in and they try to solve crimes and it's funny. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I can honestly get behind <laughs> it's that funny. because you've got the dynamic of the charming, good-looking Antonia Banderas with the funny, funny Cheech, Cheech Marin. That's, that's that would solid. be the perfect combination for buddy copping. Yeah. yeah. Dirty Dancing with <laughs> Antonio uh, Banderas <laughs> and uh, – where, where Antonio Banderas plays Patrick nobody, Swayze. Nobody Cody puts Patrick baby Swayze in the corner. Baby. <laughs> oh, God. Nobody puts baby Wait, in the corner. How about how about ghosts <laughs> where, where Patrick Swayze is dead and Antonio Banderas is... <laughs> He plays the Whoopi Goldberg part? <laughs> oh, I thought he should be Whoopi. I got a better idea. <laughs> no, you don't. Maybe uh, not. <laughs> no, you, you don't. <laughs> All right, so okay. Colin, what do you got? So, Antonio Banderas drives a school bus full of children, but while he's transporting them to school, he runs across another school bus driven by Keanu Reeves. But Keanu Reeves oh. is his evil nemesis, and every kid on that bus is the evil nemesis of a kid on Antonio Banderas' bus. <laughs> and they get in a high-speed chase all over L.A., and it is called El Bus Driver. <laughs> you know, I think bad, there should be three, three companies in the movie with Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. This is John's fifth idea. <laughs> Antonio Banderas. It's all just terrible. Like, like he's just going to cast a nutty professor with all Antonio Banderas's. <laughs> it's going to be like Eddie Murphy, except worse. I still don't worse. think John's gotten to the point of just looking around the room and naming things to put into Antonio <laughs> Banderas. Where Antonio Banderas plays a lamb. Antonio Banderas <laughs> plays a Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> He's the most swarthy 3DS in the room. Antonio Banderas is a podcaster. <laughs> Ooh, with his podcast. fellow podcast oh. guests, Antonio Banderas, Antonio Banderas, and Antonio Banderas. Uh, All right, so what say you, Devin? All right, I'm uh, gonna say that Eric won this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy cop, cop idea. Assault. Honestly, see, is that's probably problem. the most legitimately good it, thing it, I've heard. It, exactly. It was a. Good idea. A scarily good idea. Like, I would oh, actually watch that movie. Yeah. shitty action. You would definitely oh. watch El Bus Driver. <laughs> I would also watch El Bus Driver. I would also watch the Top Gun remake with yeah! all of those. Yeah! I would watch all of those. I would. Yeah. I'd be like, man, there's it's all that movie right there. Are you kidding me? That was fun for everybody. Apparently, the only movie he won't watch is his uh, biopic. So, Eric, I just watched a very challenging movie. When I watched it, I didn't necessarily watch it to see what you guys would think about it or like as a thing for the podcast, but I'm really curious to see what other people think about this movie. And it is P.T. Anderson's The Master. Oh, I wanted to see that, but now I can't remember why or what it was about. Well, uh, that's it, everybody. You heard it here on John Hates Movies. Next week is The Master. Hooray. Okay. (laughs) And then you guys usually say something. You guys usually say something funny. Is his last name Bates? No. (laughs) Good night, everybody. You can listen to our podcast on iTunes, the Stitcher app, or directly on our website. Feel free to send us a movie review suggestion. You'll have an equal chance of getting chosen for next week's movie review. You can reach us through social media, either by liking our Facebook page, John Hates Movies, or following our Twitter, at John Hates Movies. Our music was composed by Kevin McLeod. You can find this track and many more on his website, Incompetech.com. Thanks for listening, and tune in next week to hear someone say, My pants are soaked with margaritas.